again, uh, this is now is a very modern world where everyone giving the names of their AI. We don't have it. We still call it like version 15 because like <laughs> my engineer past not giving names for the algorithms. I don't know. There's a crazy 15 children to name is too many. Yeah. You just have to yeah, go to numbers at that point. 15. And you know, that is uh, the only reason actually, guys, why I started because when I saw those software, they technically was relatively quick to deliver the new price from technically the Excel on steroids. I mean that they were scared about price automation, how to bring the new price to the store when actually reason for repricing was the cost change or competitors. Technically, the reactive pricing. We always do changes when something is already happens, mm -hmm. but this is not how you win the world. And with the vision, how I had that moment to say, I need to make the price proactive. It means that for me, competitor is not a trigger. Competitor is a factor. And okay. we have now around 20 factors, including like store location, day of the week, weather, dependent items on the shelf, promotion happening in that particular store, or if that store that is at the small, maybe this cluster of the stores. And of course, the customer behavior on, for example, the Target store in the middle of Manhattan is a different from even Target store in the middle of the Las Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. But usually... We have the same pricing. We actually also touch a lot of topics on your podcast about the personalization is a huge topic, many, many years. But come on, what we I know like how most of the, we just recently launched the research regarding the price index, uh, like price maturity of the retailers in the United States. And it's a disaster, guys. They're still like very, very outdated. And what we can say about personalization if we treat the customer in the middle of Las Vegas the same as the middle of Manhattan, but I don't even say that there's a different state taxes between um, Nevada and uh, New York, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, that's for an, the interesting long point. that's an interesting point. I've never thought about the diff there's differences in taxes, which would impact your differences mm -hmm. in pricing across the states too. I've actually and no, in my the buying power is different. Why yeah. everyone knows that we need to do something different in online comparison mm -hmm. to offline. Mm -hmm. But for us, by the way, online is a, that's just a channel. The same, like for me, it's like if you have 100 store and online is 101 store because online, different behavior, different buying power, different actually the way of consumption, etc. This is what AI technically enable us. We have no limits. We can bring the optimal price in a different context. Now everyone finally know the prompting, right? The context. This is why I call it this contextual ML. Uh, technically that, that we give the algorithm hey this is your context this is a store of middle of nowhere this is like someone people coming here back and forth he's a shelf he's my stock he's my promotion plans and he's my actually digital or sorry like my marketing span for that store this all the context all the data what we can input to the algorithm and say hey please and what i need of course i say hey cool i need better profit and please keep my revenue or i want revenue growth but be not so hard on, on margins or don't care about margins and then yeah, I can calculate your optimal price position and they can do it every day, every week. Um, How often you want, right? Yeah. Really? yeah. I and mean, that's the thing, right? Yep.